Hello everyone, I am Becky Smith, the MLT program coordinator on the Green Bay campus at Rasmussen. I'm going to be your clinical chemistry one instructor this quarter, so I'd like to take some time here to run through some of the expectations I'm going to have of you as we go through the next 11 weeks. Some of the things that I'd like to cover include reviewing course assignments for the quarter, looking at our AP laboratory reports, going over what your written assignments look like, our review material, and the exams, quizzes, and discussions. First of all, for your labs, you will be attending those on campus just as you did your Intro to Clinical Laboratory Science course. In the lab, you will receive a worksheet to gather your data. When you hand in your data, it needs to be included on an APA lab report, report as you see here. If you go to Module 1 or in your introductory course announcement, you will see a, um, a link to a sample lab report. I recommend clicking on this and saving it in your computer. It gives you ideas of what you will add to each section. It also has the APA formatting set up for you already, so all you need to do is type your own information over the top of that so you can pretty much assure that it's going to look right. Okay, so this is an example of what that might look like. Um, if you do just hand in your laboratory worksheet, you will lose five points for APA formatting. You will have five points for APA and 25 points for the content of your laboratory report. In this report, you're also going to include the critical thinking questions that are on the bottom of the, the worksheet along with the reference material. In addition to having a lab report each week, you will have a written assignment. This is to be completed in full by Sunday at midnight, just as your laboratory report is. You might have to do some internet research to find the answers, but please use your own words and try not to copy word for word. I've included Mayo Medical Laboratory's website in your course. It looks just like you'll see on the bottom here. And I would like you to um, use this as a tool for some of your assignments to make it a little more efficient for you. Sometimes looking through um, a, a lot of material to try and find an answer can become frustrating, but this is a phenomenal tool to try and find the answer to some of the things that you're looking for. Here's what Mayo's lab um, looks like, or lab uh, internet site looks like. You have a couple choices with your test catalog up here on the, on the left. You can browse by disease, or you can browse by test name. So for example, if you are doing a, um, an assignment, you have to look into Zollinger-Ellison disease. You could click on the Z, and you would find Zollinger-Ellison here, and it will bring you to the tests that you might want to perform to help diagnose that disease. In this case, it would be a gastrin. If we click on the gastrin, it will bring us to our lab for gastrin, and it gives us all kinds of wonderful information on what this test would do. Um, what types of disease it would test for. I'd like to bring attention, some students don't realize that there's these tabs up here. So not only does it have the clinical and interpretive data, if you click on specimen, it'll tell you the ideal types of specimen for Mayo Medical Laboratories. Now there may be some variations in labs across the this United States, but for the most part I would say they're, they're pretty typical of what they would be. So here it's telling you that they prefer a red top tube, which you're going to learn about this quarter as well. You should be fasting. Um, it's, you can't have hemolyzed samples, lipemic samples, ecteric samples. We're going to learn what all those things are moving forward here very soon. And some sample stability. Sometimes um, you have to freeze them right away. The sample's only good 24 hours refrigerated, so we need to keep that one in the freezer. Um, it also gives an overview of some of the um, different types of things. So, this is where I think a lot of students get stuck. They stop on the overview screen and they forget to click through some of these other wonderful things here. Sometimes they'll ask you what type of method it's used. Right here, performance. Tells you what method description it is. So this is a wonderful, wonderful source for, um, for your written assignments. We also have a discussion post and one reply. Um, I do set it oftentimes to post first, so you're going to go to your discussion and be like, well, wait a minute, I can't see anybody else's posts. The reason I do this is because a lot of times it is a case study. And when you have a case study, I don't want you reading all the answers before you go and, and, and answer your own. So in this case, you read the case study, look at it, you answer, then it'll open up everybody else's posts so you can kind of dig around and see what they found so you can do your reply. 
so don't be alarmed by that. Your first post is due by Wednesday at midnight, and your reply post is due by Saturday at noon. You must have at least five or six sentences and add some new information. So here's an example of a bad post where you're not going to get really any points. Great job, Joe. I really like the part where you talked about the green poo. It was really interesting. Keep up the great work. I'll be sure to check your posts out next time because they're very interesting. Note that was five sentences, but it didn't add any new information. So if you need to do a little extra research, maybe add another type of test that you found that would um, help diagnose the same disease, things like that are what keeps some of our posts interesting. So try and add new information, not just compliment the person. You're going to have a quiz um, or an exam each week, um, starting week two. The online quizzes that have the little lock mechanism next to it, just like you had in the intro course, need to be proctored on campus. Um, this is a, an error in here. These are timed but not proctored. They are proctored. They will be from the prior week's material. Uh, your lab quiz, you will have a quiz each week in lab. Um, sometimes, I'm not going to say it's every, every single week, but it's a just review material for you and your lab instructor. Um, it's a great way to go over to the material from the previous week and um, make sure that you are understanding what you need to know before you jump in and take your online proctored quiz. Your review materials. I'm going to give you an outline um, to help you study for your next week's quiz material. I also have an app called Study Blue that I'd like you guys to use. If you don't have a smartphone, it's okay. You can use it on a tablet or your computer. And you can find me under Becky Hansen Smith or Medical Laboratory Technician 201. What this is, is a online set of flashcards that I have made for you. When you go in Module 1, you'll see Study Blue flashcards. You'll click on that and it will bring you to this screen. It'll say Becky has invited you. When you click on it, you can join with Facebook if you have a Facebook account. You can join with Google if you have a Google account. Or you can just sign up with email. The students that have the, had the easiest time finding me signed up with Facebook or Google. Um, and it'll bring you to the three classes I have in there. I've got Chemistry 1, Chemistry 2, and Immunology. You will have access to those three courses. Obviously, for this course, you'll just need um, the uh, Chemistry 1. All right. Um, final exam review lectures before and before exams and before the final or live exam review lectures before exam and final exam. So um, you will have some type of a review video or a live session that I will host before each exam to run through the material to make sure that you're familiar with it. I will have those um, times out for those by the end of week one so you can plan ahead. You will have three exams, weeks 4, 8, and 10. There will be a written final and a lab practical in week 11. You have to get um, uh, 70, well, for your exams, there will be exams weeks 4, 8, and 10. There will be a written final and a lab practical week 11. You do not need a 73% on the final exams, but you do need a 73% to pass the course. And that concludes my section on reviewing everything for Chemistry 1. If you have any questions, please refer to the general course questions um, section, which is on the top of your lessons. This way, when you ask a question and I reply, everybody can see the answer to your question. This way, um, you know, I don't get asked the same question four times, and sometimes people can go there to find the answers to their questions first.